Welcome to our review on density. First thing then, let's work out what density actually is. So when we refer to the word density, we're talking about how much mass there is in a certain volume. One of the things you do need to know is the equation for density. So density, which is measured in kilograms per meter cubed, is the mass in kilograms divided by the volume in meters cubed. So make sure you remember mass in kilograms, because again, that's one of their little favorite things to do is to give you the mass in grams. So you've got to convert to kilograms. You can obviously remember it as the triangle I've given you at the bottom, which does make rearranging a little bit easier for those of you who are not so confident in maths and rearranging equations. One of the experiments you've hopefully done at some stage in your science careers is working out the density of different objects. So in order to work out density, what we'd need is an electronic balance to get the mass. So that's the things that you just put the object on and it gives you a nice little readout on the screen. If it's a regular shape, so squares, rectangles, etc., then a ruler to work out its volume. But if it's an irregular shape, then we use something called a Eureka can and a measuring cylinder. Because what we've got at the bottom is a picture of this setup. Your Eureka can is basically a container that has a spout coming off the side. So what you do is you fill it up to just beneath the actual spout so that when you run the water through, obviously it's going to run through a little bit, but don't catch that. Then you place a measuring cylinder under the spout there so that as soon as you put your oddly shaped object inside, it's going to displace the water of a certain volume, which will be the volume of the object. And where you've got your measuring cylinder, you can just read off the actual volume of water displaced, which is the volume of your object. When we actually consider the density of different objects, if we consider the difference between a solid and a gas, first of all, then in a solid, we've got more particles in any given volume than in that same volume of a gas. Because if we think about the way particles are arranged in a solid and a gas, which I've given you at the bottom there, we can see that the particles in a solid are packed very closely together. Therefore, if we've got a specific volume and we've got a solid of that volume and a gas of the same volume, we've got more particles in the solid than in the gas. That means we've got a greater mass and therefore the density will increase. So one thing to bear in mind here is that density will depend on the arrangement of the particles and the mass of the particles. They're the two key things, mass of particles and the arrangement of the particles. And this brings us on really nicely onto our first law of conservation that we will look at in physics, which is the law of conservation of mass, which just states that particles are neither created nor destroyed. So what we find is if we've got one kilogram of ice on the desk in front of us and we're then going to evaporate it into steam, we will have one kilogram of steam at the end. Key thing to do there is to remember we're making a big assumption, which is that we're not losing any gas. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can define the term density. You can recall and apply the equation for density. You can explain why substances in different states have different densities, and you can also recall the law of conservation of mass.